All right. Hello, folks. Um, this is Keaton from Algovera, and I am here recording a quick video walkthrough of the Aragon DAO framework and applying that to the context of the uh, generative art hacking group specifically, but overall more of a walkthrough about why we're using Aragon, what it is, and what we can expect in terms of functionality. So first, I just wanted to go over why are we using this framework um, in governance as far as a DAO in the first place. So we're using a DAO framework to govern individual hacking groups and data science projects to allocate decentralized ownership of algorithms launched on various marketplaces, uh, and also to enable participants and value providers who have built the algorithm to vote on governance of the algorithm and the revenue produced by it. One important piece to note here is that the plan is for the larger Algovera community to have a 7% stake of project tokens for individual launches. So we'll go over what that means here in a moment as well. Um, and also, I just want to talk about real quick, what is Aragon? So Aragon is what we're looking at right here in the screen. Uh, it is, again, a DAO framework that provides a suite of CLI tools as well as a graphical user interface to interact with the DAO itself. So right out of the box, Aragon comes with a couple really important features, uh, which is why we ended up choosing this particular platform for our, our algorithm governance. Aragon has some really cool out of the box features like assigning and minting tokens, voting on proposals, sending disbursements, and holding and man managing treasury funds. So what does this mean? What will you get as you participate in the project? What will you expect as a member of a DAO? So first and foremost, if you are a member of a DAO, it signifies that you have ownership of the DAO itself, of the associated alg algorithm, and of any revenue produced from that algorithm as well. Um, in terms of the functionality you can expect to have as a member of a DAO and participant in a pod or a hacking session, uh, you'll be able to, like I mentioned, vote on disbursements, vote on proposals, submit your own proposals, and vote on other people's disbursements and proposals as well. One thing to note about Aragon is all votes are on chain. This means that submitting votes can incur gas fees. For this reason, we decided to launch the Generative Art DAO on the Polygon network. So if you're unfamiliar with Polygon, I'm gonna explain what that is and I'm gonna go a little bit over what L2 solutions are as well. So Polygon is an L2 or layer two Ethereum protocol. Basically what this means is it's a scaling layer for the main Ethereum network. It supports things like, like optimistic rollups uh, and also has an entirely separate chain known as the Polygon POS, which is actually where we launched this DAO. So one really important thing to note here, first of all, on the screen here, you can see I'm actually on a test DAO on the Rinkby network because I am going to submit some transactions and don't want to incur gas costs. Um, but launching on Polygon is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, Polygon is a separate chain with its own assets. Now, this can get a bit confusing because Polygon as an L2 of Ethereum does support the Ethereum virtual machine and any Ethereum wallet address can be used on Polygon. But again, the assets are completely separate. So just because you have some ETH on Ethereum mainnet, that does not mean you have any ETH on the Polygon network. Again, it's a separate chain with separate assets. So we are launching on Polygon again because it is much, much cheaper than Ethereum mainnet and is still compatible with everyone's existing wallet address, including Ethereum ENS. Um, and the transaction speeds are a bit faster as well. So again, that's what an L2 is or layer two, and that's why we're using Polygon. One thing to note is since Polygon is a separate chain, you do actually have to add the network to your MetaMask account. So real briefly, I'm gonna take a look at how we will add Polygon as a network to our MetaMask account. So again, I'm on Rinkby here. Uh, if you're looking at my MetaMask account, if you click this top option here, you can see the various networks you have available. As you can see, I have mainnet and then a bunch of test networks for some development, uh, but we do also have this option here to add a new network, which is what we're gonna do for Polygon. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add new network. And then we're brought to this pop-out page, which is where we're gonna add some information about Polygon. So there's a warning here about making sure that um, we're providing the right information. As far as where to get this information, like network name, RPC URL, it's very easy to verify. Um, we're gonna include some accompanying resources with this video that will help you out. I'm gonna show you the page here. There's actually a nifty Medium article that has all the information you'll need here. So I'm literally just going to this Medium article, which not only talks about how to set up MetaMask initially, 
but it shows you how to add polygons. So I'm going to go ahead and follow these instructions here. Add this for the network name. Grab this for the RPC URL. Chain ID, this is actually super important, so you really want this to be correct. Any transactions you try to submit on chain, we'll check to make sure you have the right chain ID. There's a couple optional uh, fields here. I'm gonna go ahead and just add those as well since we do just have that information. The native symbol on the Polygon network, just in case you're wondering, is called Matic. And the block explorer URL, which can be helpful to have just in case you wanna click right into that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save here. And now you can see I'm on the Polygon network and it appears in my list of networks. Also, you can see now that I'm on Polygon, uh, you can see that I actually have some assets in here. So again, these are assets on the Polygon network, not on mainnet Ethereum. So again, this is, it can take a while to wrap your head around, especially if you're new to Web3. What I will say is as you're interacting with the DAO, if you need any support, whether it's managing assets cross chain or just adding Polygon as a network to your MetaMask account, please stop by the Discord and ask. We're always happy to help. Uh, but again, we will include some resources with this video as well. So uh, that's how you add Polygon. Um, just real quick, and you can see here now that I switched networks, Aragon client is telling me like, hey, there actually isn't uh, this DAO on the network you're currently on. So if I actually just go back, switch my network back to Rinkeby for the purpose of the test, and I reload, you can see we'll pop back into our DAO. And then just for fun, I am gonna go ahead and show y'all what, what the actual, so again, this is a test DAO, as you can see by the name and the network here. I am gonna go ahead and switch over to Polygon and just show y'all the generative art DAO. So again, uh, one of the cool things about Aragon is you can just, as long as you're connected with your wallet, you can just access any DAO uh, that you're a member of. So I'm just gonna go ahead and manually type this name in here. Again, we'll have some links that'll help you out. Uh, once you type in the name of a DAO, you'll get the screen chat mark here to show you that it is an actual DAO and you do have access to it. So again, this is the actual DAO for governing the generative art algorithm. And if you go to tokens here, you'll actually see a list of all the addresses and token holders. So uh, everyone here, these were the folks who were involved in the hacking session and claimed a POAP NFT, uh, which also means we all as participants have equal voting power and a balance of one Algovera art token. So this is the real DAO. Uh, what I'm gonna do next is just go over a couple pieces of functionality and demonstrations here. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the test network to avoid incurring any additional gas fees. So again, just gonna go ahead and go back to MetaMask, switch back to Rinkeby, which is where the test DAO is. Uh, and again, you will see that Aragon cannot find the organization since, since I switched. Now I will go ahead and go back to our test organization. And we're gonna talk about some of the core pieces of functionality that Aragon provides out of the box. So um, again, all of these voting actions we're gonna see here and all these transactions are on chain. So this is gonna be important just to keep in mind. So one of the main uh, pieces of functionality that Adele provides is the ability to vote on proposals. Now proposals can be very simple. Uh, and they are on chain votes. So again, all I did here was I went to the voting app. These are just different pieces of functionality, like different modules in the Aragon DAO framework. And I clicked new vote to propose a vote. Now, again, you'll notice when I go to create a new vote, it's gonna tell me that I actually don't have the permission to do this. So this is done through uh, the tokens app. And again, you're just gonna follow the prompts there and it is gonna ask you to sign a transaction. Again, here I am on a test network here. Uh, so you can see this price, this is roughly representative of what we'd see in terms of gas fees on Ethereum mainnet. But again, we ran this project DAO on Polygon. So the gas fees will be much, much cheaper. But again, this is test network. So this isn't actual real money I'm working with. But as you can see, that was it. The proposal was submitted. Once that transaction actually propagates across the test network here, we'll see the vote pop up as an open vote. And then we'll go through what it looks like to actually vote on a proposal. And again, any member of a DAO, uh, if you've been added as a member and you hold tokens, you can propose on a vote and you can vote on uh, proposals that are already out there. So again, here I'm attached. Uh, I have my test account here. If I want to see how many tokens each of my test accounts have, I can just go over to tokens. As you can see here, what I'm currently selected, I have just for the purposes of the test, uh, the most voting tokens, which is just algo test here. 
which allows me to basically confirm votes unilaterally, which is not how we have the regular DAO set up. This is just the purpose of the test. But for the purpose of the test here, this is what a proposal looks like. So again, you can see the description of the actual project. You can see who submitted it, which was technically uh, the, the app that we proposed it through. You can see the actual parameters of what the vote needs to pass. And I'm going to talk about these real quick. So each vote has three main parameters that we'll want to keep in mind. It's the time that the vote remains open, the support percentage needed, which is the percentage of votes cast that need to be yes. So out of all the votes that are cast, greater than 50% needs to be a yes for this proposal to pass. This approval percentage is analogous to what we think of as quorum in any traditional uh, legislative or voting body, meaning this is the total percentage of the token supply that needs to participate in the vote in order to make it valid. So again, right now it's set to 15%. So that means out of all the tokens that are issued from this DAO, 15% need to issue a vote in order to reach quorum and in order to actually approve this vote. Again, uh, there's plenty of documentation on this in the, as far as the difference between support percentage and minimum approval percentage. However, again, always stop by our Discord if you have questions and check out the additional resources we'll have linked as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and vote yes here. Again, being an on-chain vote, I will need to uh, confirm a transaction here. And again, you're seeing some transaction costs associated with this. Signing that transaction will issue my vote. And again, since this account I'm voting with has 100 tokens, this will not only meet the 50% approval, but it will also meet the 15% needed as well. So uh, if we go back to voting, shortly again, once the transaction propagates across the testnet, we will see my yes vote pop up here, uh, which again will pass the overall vote. So that is how you propose a vote and uh, vote on one. Again, votes are just a way of taking temperature and they are on chain, so that's important to remember. Now, another crucial element of DAO functionality provided by Aragon out of the box is the ability to manage the shared treasury. And this is a big one because we do anticipate DAOs holding value generated by algorithms published either on the Ocean Marketplace or on an upcoming Algebra specific marketplace. But again, the DAO is going to be managing this treasury. So the DAO will have a wallet. It can receive funds. It can pay out funds. Again, if you want to send funds to a DAO, um, to the DAO address, you would select this deposit option. So let's go ahead. And let's say I'm just going to and send a little bit of ETH to this account just so we can have some information to play with here. So this is me, again, sending funds to the DAO. And one, one thing to note is whatever wallet you have connected here, that is the wallet that's going to be actually sending the transactions, right? So I'm going to go ahead and create this transaction. And again, there's going to be some gas costs associated because it is on chain. And that is that. So if I go in my MetaMask wallet here, I should see the pending deposit where I'm sending 0.05 ETH to the DAO. Once this propagates, we'll see this show up in finance here and we'll be able to uh, essentially have a DAO operating budget. So the reason I did that is because I also want to show what it looks like to disperse funds from the DAO to a member. Okay. So now I'm um, in finance here. You can see this uh, deposit is propagated. So now this DAO as a decentralized organization governed by the community has 0.05 ETH worth at this time, 189.97 USD. So, okay, the DAO has some treasury funds. Let's say we wanna disperse some funds here to a specific member. So for fun, I'm just gonna go ahead and select a different account I have here. And I'm gonna send funds to this account. So I'll select withdrawal, which again signifies taking money out of the DAO treasury and giving it to a separate address. I'm just gonna do the entire withdrawal I just sent and I'm gonna submit this withdrawal. Yet again, this will submit a transaction, but one important thing to note here, and you'll see this permission note, is that an individual member, which is this wallet I'm acting with right now, can't actually withdraw funds from the DAO. So if I request a disbursement like this, if I request a withdrawal to a specific address, what that will do is it will actually create a vote automatically that the community will need to vote on. So what I did right there, even though I just requested a withdrawal to a specific address, what that actually did was nothing other than generate a vote. So if I go to open projects or open votes, excuse me, once again, that transaction requesting to register the new proposal propagates, we'll see that right here. 
So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my other account, which holds the majority of these test tokens. So I can just approve this vote in one or approve this proposal in one vote. And again, you'll see uh, a description of what this vote is for. It creates a new payment of this amount to this address. And since I did not put a note, it doesn't have an actual description here, which will be best practice uh, to have a description. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and vote yes on this. Pay the gas fees here. And again, once that transaction propagates, this vote will be passed, which will then enable us to disperse this amount to the wall address, which you can see right here. So again, the, the important thing to note here is that there's community governance of this treasury, right? Anytime a balance wants to be paid out, the community needs to approve of it. And this is sort of where we begin to leverage this decentralized governance aspect where there's no top-down decision-making. If you're a member of a DAO, if you're a member of a pod and you contributed value to a project, you get voting and governance rights as well. So uh, that is a disbursement to an external address. And one, one thing you can think of here is, you know, if, if folks want to cash out their tokens, if a particular member of a DAO has incurred some costs on behalf of the project, this is the method by which we would be able to send funds to folks who have been working with the DAO. There are a couple other things in terms of how we manage the functionality of the DAO. Right now, the core team is handling a lot of the configuration. Uh, this does not mean that the core team has sole decision making. In fact, quite the opposite. We really want community decision making. However, at this point, uh, the core team is sort of taking point on helping the community manage the DAO. So for example, there are some potential permissions that may need to be edited in terms of the voting parameters. Like let's say the community wanted to change the vote threshold to something higher than 50% or require more than 15% of the token holders to actually vote. Uh, you can do that through the Aragon CLI, and I would recommend contacting the core team for help with that. But again, of course, uh, you can trigger votes and update the configuration of the DAO as an individual member. Again, uh, keep an eye out for some additional resources we'll be posting with this video. We're gonna include some resources on what Polygon is, what an L2 network is, uh, some general Aragon resources, and then of course, some resources on how to add Polygon to your MetaMask wallet. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, really appreciate everyone's time and attention here. And if there is anything else we can help with, please let us know.